From KUNC and the NPR Network, this is In the NoCo, a daily slice of Northern Colorado news and happenings. It's Tuesday, April 16th. I'm Erin O'Toole. You might be very aware that KUNC has been in our spring membership drive over the last week. And on this last day of our drive, we at In the NoCo wanted to treat our supporters by listening back to an interview with a prominent journalist who has invested a lot in her Colorado communities, co-host of NPR's Code Switch, Lori Lizaraga. Lizaraga's journey into journalism wasn't planned. She was studying business at Southern Methodist University until one day she found herself in the wrong classroom. But what I did find was behind a very heavy studio door, a whole state-of-the-art newsroom for the student newscast that went on every single day, anchor desk with the seniors, you know, behind in their suits and the green screen and the cameras and the technical director with the headset on and the totally equipped even with the on-air sign above the the door. And the technical director turns around and, you know, takes off his headphones and is like, close the door. And I was like, oh, okay, close the door. And, you know, the heavy door kind of like whooshes my hair back. And I'm like, what was that? Like just stepped into Narnia. She never did find that class she was signed up for, but Lizaraga had found her calling. Lizaraga is an Ecuadorian Mexican American, and much of her work is informed by her cultural identity. But staying true to those roots and to her community has come at a cost. In 2021, Lizaraga's contract with Nine News wasn't renewed. She was one of three Latina journalists let go from the Denver news station in less than a year. She's been vocal about the discrimination she says led to that. In March of 2021, she published an article in Westward called Latin X that went viral. And now, as a host for NPR's Code Switch, Lizaraga meticulously unpacks how issues of race and culture underpin everything in America. The catalyst for the position that I'm in today at NPR and hosting a race and identity show, which is Code Switch, the catalyst for that was absolutely the struggle of being a Latina, of being a first gen reporter in um, a local news market, you know, in in Denver. Those struggles were very much what made me a great journalist, but they were also um, the work is hard enough. And some of the fights and some of the struggles were really because of a learning curve where we weren't speaking the same language. I think we had the same end goals in mind, which was coverage and good coverage. But who is newsworthy is sort of in the eyes of decision makers. And who is newsworthy and what is newsworthy, that that really does vary. Um, And so trying to legitimize that point of what was worth talking about while also just doing the hard job of being a journalist, certainly during the social justice movement, certainly during the pandemic. All of it was so challenging anyway to then be fighting the fight on top of a really hard job. It, it's exhausting. But I don't think that that has to necessarily, and this is me, right, talking to myself. A few years ago, I would have been very frustrated with me trying to see the glass half full right now. And it's worth going to bat so that you can show the value of these stories, of these voices, of the, these communities and what they have going on and who needs to be held accountable on their behalf and not backing down um, mm-hmm. too easily, not giving up without a fight because the stories are there and they are worth telling and um, they are top line news. Yeah. Well, you mentioned this, but I want to come back to your time at Nine News in Denver. Could you briefly explain what happened and And what you took away from your experience there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that it would be a much longer conversation than we have the time for, Erin, to say exactly what happened. But ultimately, I think that it was an experience for me over the course of 2019 and um, 2020 and then part of 2021, um, where I was seeing in a very, very hyper bubble of a of a way gov- because of the social justice movement that was happening because of the protests because of the pandemic and the, its disproportionate effect on communities and communities of color and underserved communities um there were there was just a lot to cover and a lot that felt very personal and a lot that was really challenging to get on air when my expertise about these communities or the value of those stories or the value of um 
talking about how they were or how they were not being served and holding that accountable on behalf of those communities, it was often very challenging to figure out how to get on the same page about making that matter. And I think that it's not a unique experience, unfortunately, after I left, um, or rather was let go from Nine News at the end of my contract in 2021, I wrote a piece. It came out in Westward, and I was so grateful to them for letting me uneditedly talk about and be honest and frank about the experience that I had with the course of the two years. And I, I think, Erin, it wasn't about um, me feeling any type of way other than indebted to the communities that I said I cared so much about serving and that I didn't want to leave without saying what happened. And I didn't want to leave without letting them know that the way that we cover, the way that media characterizes communities and people is very, very impactful and has the opportunity to make massive and influential and life-changing Im- impacts in these communities for these families, for these people and in, in the issues that they're facing. And it also has the power to bury the lead and it has the power to move on without certain people who aren't in those headlines or who don't speak the language or who don't contribute enough money or turn on their TVs in a certain zip code. Um, and that is just so the job of of journalism uh, and journalists as watchdogs of our communities to make sure that we are being representative and make sure that we are everywhere as much as we can be. Um, and it was my way of, of holding my newsroom and the news industry accountable in a way that we are told as journalists we're supposed to do with every other entity that we get the chance to, you know, hold up to a, a mirror and try to um, hold accountable. And so that's what I that's what I did. And um, when the piece came out, I was shocked how impactful and how far how impactful it was and how far it went. And it did ultimately uh, amount to to change in um, newsrooms across the country for how to be more culturally representative and changing, you know, the language around uh, immigration standards of of coverage. Um, but more than anything, it is just it was part of a larger conversation that we're still having today about how to do coverage that's inclusive, but coverage that doesn't also feel that being inclusive is like charity, like making sure that we're putting priority on all communities, not because it's it's you know like a favor but because they're part of your community and they're part of your market so it's our duty to make sure that we're reporting on everyone there's always work to do Aaron you know (laughs) but uh, I do think that we we you know each as as journalists reporters with this platform I think that we have a lot of a lot of power and a lot of opportunity and I hope that even when the days are hard that we remember you know even just the one voice that we lift up and the one story that we give a platform to it matters. Lori, thank you so much for all the great work that you do for Code Switch. And thanks for taking the time to talk with me today. Well, thanks for inviting me. This is such a treat. You can find the original conversation with Lori Lizaraga in our show notes and at KUNC.org. I'm Erin O'Toole. Thank you so much for listening and supporting In the NoCo and all your favorite KUNC shows. We'll be back with you tomorrow with more of what's happening in Northern Colorado. See you next time.